Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Chaplet Monday. I'm not sure how many we'll have on with us tonight. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter Monday. First Monday of Easter. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend with family, at least with your loved ones. Tonight, Saint is not very well known, actually. I, Saint Stephen Harding is our saint for the night. And he is um, uh, credited with being one of the main founders of the Cistercian Order. And we're going to talk about them in a little bit. Elena, I was wondering if, yeah, I didn't see you at the two masses I was at, and I wasn't sure if you had gone to the 7 a.m. We're going to lift you up in prayer, Elena, tonight. As usual, please feel free to put your intentions into the comments and we will lift them up when we get to the prayer portion of tonight. Again, tonight's saint is St. Stephen Harding. You can find the prayer sheet on our homepage or on our chaplet page, www.hrccr.com. That's our homepage or our chaplet page, hrccr.com slash chaplets, where you can find all the saints that we've done. We have over a hundred now. Hi, Minga. Welcome. Hello, Lenora. Hi, ladies. Tonight's going to be a quick one, so thank you for popping in. St. Stephen Harding, there's not a lot known about him, except that he was the third abbot of the Cistercian Order, uh, being the youngest of the three founders. And so, for anybody familiar with my mother's order, Society for Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity, our founders have passed on into eternal glory. But it was incredible to know them while they were alive. Again, there were uh, um, two main founders, and then there was Sister Margaret Mary, who'd been with them for the, since the beginning. And so um, it's, it's amazing to get to know a little bit about who founded certain orders. You know, Franciscan order, obviously, it's this. Um, and then there are a lot of other orders like that named after the person that their practices and their devotions on. The Cistercian order um, was founded by three men and Saint Robert is a saint now and Saint Stephen Harding and Saint Alberic. So three men, Stephen, Alberic, and Robert. And Saint and Robert being the the main um, founder. But both of them were quite a bit older than Stephen and so St. Stephen ended up being the abbot for the longest amount of time. So Stephen was born in England, Dorset, England. He could speak several languages, including English, French, and Latin. He wanted to be a monk from a very young age and was placed in, in an abbey of Sherborne. Um, after that, he was there for a little while and decided to move on and he was a traveling scholar. So he was a traveling teacher, always very, uh, motivated to learn more and then he moved to the abbey where he met Robert. Uh, this was in Burgundy Burgundy, and the abbot was St. Robert of Melesme. So uh, unfortunately at the time and this was in the 1000s and 1100s there was actually a lot of corruption inside religious orders. They were often a hotbed of just a lot of impropriety, you know, uh, whether it was wealth or women or um, fraud. Uh, There's just a lot of corruption inside because those were places of power uh, rather than spiritual growth. And Robert of Melesme actually was done with that. And he was an abbot, so he was very high up uh, ranking, but he could see all of the atrocities around him. This was not what he signed up for. This is not where his heart was. This is not what he felt inspired to do. And so he actually left that, that abbey and Stephen and Albrecht followed him. Um, Albrecht was actually ordered to return and he was obedient and returned, but Stephen remained in solitude with Robert at the time. 21 monks then followed suit and, and joined them. 
And I think that that's beautiful. Whenever you see corruption, you also see goodness rise up. The ones that are committed to um, the, the um, teachings of Christ himself and will not feed into the evil that's, that's going on around them. Um, so Alberic, you know, we hear that Alberic went back, but it looks like the reason being he brought a lot of monks back with him, the monks that were done with that life and done with seeing that life at the other abbot, abbey. Um, this was in Citeaux, France. And so this is where the Cistercian name kind of comes from. Uh, Robert was the first abbot and and then he um, returned to Melesme after a year to attempt to, you know, um, help the to fix the corruption, but also to be there for the monks there. And then Albrecht took over as abbot until his death in 1108. And then Stephen took over. So this is where Stephen Harding comes in. Now, both Robert and Albrecht were not abbots very long. So Stephen was the abbot of this new Cistercian order all through its most um, impactful growth. Now you're going to recognize a name here, Bernard of Clairvaux, who is a saint that a lot of people have heard of. He visited in 1112 and he brought his followers with him. Between 1112 and 1119, a dozen new Cistercian houses were formed. So again, under the tutelage of, under the leadership of Stephen Harding, they just exploded, multiplied. Houses were popping up all over with these men and then also eventually um, nuns as well in their own houses. But these men inspired to live this life of being monks. And now this, they wanted a life of prayer, but they also wanted a life of service. And so you see that in the Cistercian order today, even that they um, almost see those as the two legs to the, uh, to being Christ, you know, service and prayer, service and prayer. Um, in 1119, Stephen also wrote, wrote the Carta Caritatis, the Charter of Love which became an important document in the Cistercian order, establish, establishing its unifying principles. And this allowed there to be um, unity amongst all the houses that were popping up. He ended up serving as abbot for 25 years. And while the Cistercians themselves won't say just one person was in charge of founding their order, uh, the shape of its beliefs and its rapid growth in the 12th century was definitely due to Stephen Harding's leadership. In 1133, he resigned as head of the order due to age and disability, and he actually passed away the following year. His feast day in the Roman calendar. Now, this has flip-flopped. Again, I could not find any kind of um, hi historical documents attributing to these changes, but at one point his feast day was March 28th. At another point it was April 17th, hence why we're doing him today, because his, his feast day or one of his feast days is coming up on April 17th. Um, and that's actually where it's celebrated in England still on April 17th. So it looks like uh, a lot of the Western Roman Catholic Church may have switched to March 28th, while the English uh, Church uh, in England maintained April 17th. Um, the Cistercian order celebrates him on July 15th. So he's got like three feast days. <laughs> so um, he is considered the patron saint of the Cistercians along with Albrecht and Robert, but St. Stephen Harding again served as abbot for 25 years, which was more than Albrecht served for a year and Robert served for a year as well. And so um, he's very much credited with the beautiful changes in the Cistercian order and how much it grew and flourished and ended up being that place of solitude, prayer, service that all three men knew was lacking in their order back home. And so it's, it's beautiful when um, people feel the Holy Spirit moving and create and fill a need that's there, that exists, especially when you're seeing um, almost the opposite uh, where you come from. So um, may we all be uh, 
avenues of change towards goodness and towards mercy and towards uh, the true um, love of Jesus Christ. So may we all do that in our own communities, in our own ministries, in our own homes. All right, so we're going to move into the prayer portion. Tonight's chaplet is brief as well, just like the story of St. Stephen Harding. And it is one of our Niners. So I, I did it in the colors of the Cistercian habits. And you can see their picture here on the on the bio sheet. But I'm, I know you've seen these habits before, at least in pictures of the Catholic Church or pic pictures of the Vatican, that white beige cassock and then the um the covering of the dark brown um and so i think that i tried to keep that here with the wooden beads the dark and the the beige kind of you can kind of see it right um and then a, a just a simple wooden crucifix very um i thought appropriate as well and then here is the medal made by, by our good friend kim in france for saint stephen harding this is one of the images of him teaching which is what he uh, never stopped loving. So he always loved that. So if you are ready, oh, Mike, can you give me that piece of paper with all our intentions over there? I wrote them and on the table there and I forgot to bring them with me. So we have some intentions and uh, it's right there next to the Bible. Yeah, thank you. If you ever can't make it to Chaplet Monday, which happens all the time, right? Uh, it, either your week gets away from you or you know you won't be able to make it, Sharon called me with her all of her intentions. So just please know that we are praying every Monday for Chaplet Monday. And if you ever can't be here with us, please send us your intentions. You can text them to me or email me or message me on Facebook. Um, and you can always message your intentions and somehow let me know that you've done it so that I can check those messages. But for now, let's I'll go ahead and go through all of the intentions that you are putting in the comments now. And then we will pray the chapel. So we're lifting you up, Elena, for healing and for strength. Get you back to mass. Bernadette Toman, we lift up your sister who is still fighting so hard to become stronger. We want that procedure to help her. Lenora. We lift up your family, your grandchildren, your sisters. And I love that you always pray for victims of cancer and COVID. And always pray for your grandchildren, your daughters, and your sisters, and everyone who needs prayers. I love it. I hope they know how much you pray for them. Pray for each one of you joining us tonight and all of your personal intentions, private intentions. Megan lifts up uh, prayers for Thanksgiving for a beautiful triduum. Her new goddaughter, Alyssa, grateful for um, your late father-in-law who would have been 78 today. I'm sorry, and we lift up Toby as well. Uh, for all the intentions of your household, for ministries and projects that Megan's blessed with, for her own health. So we lift all of that up. Cleo, we lift up your sister who was laid off last week. So we pray that she finds um, new employment soon. We lift up your niece to have a healthy pregnancy and continued prayers for all police officers. It's another one I'm always so happy that Cleo remembers that. Lenore also lifts up Father Oren and the staff of Holy Rosary, all of your Catholic churches, all of your, um, all of those devoted to helping others. Cal, hi Cal, we lift up the intentions of the women involved in our parish. Thank you, Cal. We lift up your intentions as well. Angela, we pray for all who suffer with diabetes, anxiety, mental issues, and alcoholism. And we pray for your son's disability that it gets approved. Amen. So we lift that up tonight. Um, we lift up Jim Franklin, who was our friend and visitor last week. Uh, for continued healing of the back pain after his surgery. So it's been a while since he's had that surgery and he's still um, experiencing pain. So for that chronic pain in his back, we lift up Father Brady's dad, Ron, who is not doing well and um, looks like maybe um, entering heaven soon. So we lift up Father Brady during this time. We lift up his dad, Ron, and also Father Brady's mom. Sharon's intention, we pray for healing for her mother-in-law who's experiencing shoulder pain and also other health issues. 
Um, she prays for a good soaking rain. We just need rain down here in South Texas. We are lifting up Bernice Pocluto for her healing after a successful surgery. So thanksgiving for this successful surgery and he, uh, quick healing. Um, and then we lift up the repose of the soul of uh, three ladies, Gloria Zdunkowitz, Bernita Krenick, the mom of Father Greg Krenick, and then Marie Bodwin McFarlane, uh, one of the Catholic daughters, uh, mother of the Catholic daughter or Catholic daughter. But we lift up all of them and their families uh, for this new loss. And this is all within the last week. So we pray for their families and for the mourning that they are undergoing right now, right after Easter. Angela lifts up all those who suffer from depression. Um, we, we lift up our boys. We lift up all students, all kids getting ready for the end of the year, especially all those that uh, may be having finals pretty soon. Mike, do you have any other intentions? Yeah. We lift up all of our parents, Mike's parents and my parents, especially dad who struggles with vertigo. Um, and mom, actually, we pray in Thanksgiving for today is her two year anniversary of being healed from her aneurysm. And so we pray in Thanksgiving that she's still with us. Please feel free to add your intentions as we go along and we will get Get ready to pray. Um, we'll begin on the crucifix with this opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, St. Stephen Harding found great joy in imitating you through a life of poverty, praying, fasting, and working hard. When the other monks got tired of such a difficult life, St. Stephen formed a new community, the Cistercians. I ask him to pray for me when life becomes a burden. Help me, O oh God, to discover the redemption that comes from doing what is not easy, giving up materialistic desires, spending more time in prayer, doing penance by making sacrifices and fasting, and completing work that is not pleasant. Please overcome my laziness and my resistance to appreciating the difficult. St. Stephen Harding, pray for me. Amen. So as with our other Niners, we'll pray three sets of one Our Father, one Hail Mary, and one Glory Be. For an increase in patience. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, to deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. For an increase in humility. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. For an increase in charity. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We pl pray the closing prayer of St. Stephen on the medal, and this prayer actually comes from the Cistercian prayer book called the Sanctoral. It is an alternate opening prayer for the solemnity of Saints Robert, Alberic, and Stephen. God of power and might, you have given us in your saints a living witness to monastic life. Schooled in their principles and observances, may we too strive to show that same faith and love in our lives. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. St. Stephen Harding, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Niners are so, um, they're so easy to add to your life because it's just three sets of three prayers. Easy to keep in your pocket. You could pick any saint you want. Even if your saint has longer chaplets than this normally, you can have a niner for that saint as well. And these are awesome to keep in your pocket. Say those prayers throughout the day, um, especially to those saints whose uh, patronages are very important and would help you with whatever you're going through. So short and sweet for Easter Monday. Thank you all for being here. Next week, we get to know St. Gianna Mola, one of our more modern saints. She'll, she's next week. So St. Gianna Mola is who we will talk about and pray to next week. And then the entire month of May will be dedicated to Our Lady. May is the month of Mary anyways. And so every week we are going to have a different um, image of Our Lady. So continue to join us every Monday evening, live at 8 p.m. Central Time. Don't forget that. And we thank you guys for joining us tonight. Happy Easter, everyone. And may you sleep with the angels and rise with the saints. Good night, everybody. God bless you.